a podcast uh, with him and then I found your mm -hmm. channel and I started watching some of your videos and I was like wow there is so much so much information here dear karate tube Germany friends the podcast that you are about to see is between my karate teacher Jürgen Meyer from Germany and Beijing based psychology teacher Minea Semandan who reached out for him for an interview about his karate life experience. Mr. Simandan is a Romanian-born certified positive psychology coach. He has been living in Asia since 2002 and now lives and works in Beijing, China. He has some background in martial arts. He trained in several martial arts, including Aikido, Judo, Muay Thai and even Shotokan Karate. He used to be a competitive archer for many years having participated at many international and regional Thai archery championships, including the World Archery Cup in Shanghai, the World Indoor Archery Cup in Singapore and the Asian Grand Prix held in Bangkok. In Beijing in 2018, he opened his own archery club, as well as continuing on his martial arts journey. He's the host and producer of Crossroads Psychology Video Podcast. Enjoy this podcast. I'm Vojko Michnia, signing in from Beijing. In this episode, we will talk about karate and self-defense. I'm joined today by Jürgen Meyer. Jürgen Meyer is a seven-dan Shotokan karate instructor from Germany, who has been practicing martial arts since 1978. That is the year I was born. From 1983 onwards, He's been running his own karate clubs and by now he's trained three generations of students. He is also a coach, a weapon specialist and a speaker who promotes karate to the world. Thank you, Jürgen, for agreeing to be on my podcast. Dear Minia, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Uh, thank you for having me on your show. I think uh, 20 years ago it would be very complicated and at least very expensive to do it. I'm really grateful to talk to you to China on the other side of right. the world. Right. And, and in different time zones. And when we see, when we say it's great to finally meet, it is actually because we've never met before. We have just interacted yes. online yes. Through, through YouTube, through messages. And I actually found you through Sebastian's channel, Tai Chi International. Mm -hmm. You had a podcast uh, with him and then I found your mm -hmm. channel and I started watching some of your videos and I was like, wow, there is so much, so much information here. Um, I have to say, I really uh, fell in love with Sebastian. Sebastian is such a beautiful uh, human being. Uh, especially in this tough martial arts world. Um, he is so kind, he is well educated, he has values, everything I, I appreciate in a human being. Yeah. So you have been a martial arts practitioner all my life and I'm 43 <laughs> years old. Yes, let's, yes. <laughs> let's, let's establish some context. So how did you start and how has karate shaped you as a person both physically, obviously, but also mentally. <clears throat> uh, I'm living in Germany. Uh, soccer is uh, by far the biggest sport here in Germany. So I started with soccer. Uh, in the beginning, I had no uh, car. My motorbike was broken, so I had to walk four or five kilometers three times a week. After after a few weeks, uh, somebody catched me up and I didn't have to walk anymore. I was so fascinated from martial arts, from the movement, not so on the self-defense side, only this fascinating new cultural world. And on the other hand, I have to say I was a little bit disappointing from football. When I was 14, we got a new uh, trainer and this was a tough guy. He was playing in the second division. And uh, yeah, it was all about endurance, running on a fast pace. 
I was a defender. My job was to kick down this other guy 90 minutes. And at this time, I was milk and honey. I was a very shy boy. Uh, this was not... I was dreaming of. I was dreaming of martial arts. So how have martial arts shaped you mentally? Obviously, physically, you became very strong because I know from your website and from your videos that you focus on Kumite a lot. And that means yes. very good yeah. endurance and body strength. But how about mentally? How has karate shaped you from a, from a mental point yes, of view? As you mentioned, it's a very natural way. It's in the beginning physical. Uh, you get stronger, you get more endurance, you get more flexibility. Your motor skills uh, slowly uh, develop. And with this comes uh, failure. And also, if you stay on the road, you get more uh, confident. And I think this is, you get stronger, your body gets stronger. And at the same time, you are more self-reliant. You get more resilience uh, uh, against um, the environment about stress. It is, it's amazing what you said. You said failure, self-confidence, resilience. This, these are like skills we would want to instill in, let's say, the new generation or any generation yes. from through any other means, not necessarily martial arts or karate. And I find it, I find it beautiful, beautifully said that at a point when we start, we have to accept the fact that there's going to be failure be before we can have great success, especially in combat sports, because there's always going to be someone better than you. Exactly. Exactly. Somebody draws and shoots faster than you at a certain point. So why Karate Shotokan? I also practiced Karate Shotokan when I was young and uh, I found it quite rigid, to be honest. Obviously, I was also very, very young, uh, I think middle school, yes. early, early high school. So why Karate Shotokan? What, the reason why I, I practiced and I started <coughs> with Karate Shotokan it's because it was the nearest club to my home. So it was, you know, an opportunity. And I joined and that's actually how my martial arts passion started with Karate Shotokan. Although, let's say I didn't stay in Shotokan. So w where did it start for you? Why Shotokan? Yes, it was exactly the same uh, in my life. This was the nearest dojo. It was an authentic, traditional Japanese family style. It still exists. Uh, the name is Doshinkan. Uh, there are worldwide uh, spread it. And um, the only thing was, it was a little bit like a cult. So they are separated. They are, don't go to uh, tournaments. They it was all related to one big master, Hanshi. Uh, I, I'm proud to, to train with him in these old times. Isao Ishikawa was his name. He passed away a um, long time ago. Uh, but I miss this comedy. Uh, when, when adults, uh, young, young adults want to compete, want to fight, especially in the martial arts. And I miss this. And after, I think, one and a half years, I changed the club. And that club was, I say, Shotokan related. It was the old times. It was Wild West. Um, uh, do you know what I mean with Wild West? Uh, there was not... We live now in a, in a time where all information is available. You yes. can go vir virtually in the dosho in Okinawa and visit the old masters. In this time, when I started, there was even not a book. There was no information available. And so it was the Wild West times, I call it. I, I totally understand. And it was pretty much the same when I started martial arts. And oh, later... We have a, the screen is freezing.
Yes, I totally understand what you're saying because it was exactly the same when I started practicing serious martial arts and I was into Aikido and there was nothing about Aikido. We, we actually found one book in English which we translated and we circulated and it was like, yeah, the wild west of, of martial arts at that time. But it was passionate. You were looking for information. Uh, you were training by yourself. I was so dedicated. They offered only three times a week training and I don't miss even one training. I was so hooked. Uh, I told you I started um, in this first club and I stayed one and a half year there. I, I knew 12 kata, 12 forms as a wow. white belt. Wow. And and this was his absolute passion about this new sport. Uh, nowadays, um, if you teach children, you need maybe one year that they get the first cutter. Maybe you know it, uh, Hayan Shodan. Yes, yes. And uh, when the adults are brown belts or black belts, they know maybe their student kata and the kata that is necessary to getting the next done graduation or mm. anything like that you know uh, this were different times right so now that we have some background i want to be very practical in our discussion there okay. are so many topics we can discuss but in this video podcast i want us to focus specifically on how karate training and how skills in karate can be applied in real life. Because my mission here at Crossroads Psychology is to find ways I can implement or my audience, the world can implement theory and theoretical concepts into practice and also into real life practice. So since you mentioned kata, for starters, can we make a distinction of how kata and kumite are seen in the dojo? Yes, uh, these are the two sides of the coin. Um, I think <laughs> I'm a traditionalist, both is necessary. Uh, a concrete uh, uh, example for this. Um, when I started, only with comedy, only with athletics uh, for young talents for fighting, uh, you immediately recognized after half a year or one year serious injuries. Yes. So the foundation, the, the lower body was not prepared for this extreme fighting, for this, you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of punishment that goes into, into kumite, into sparring. And when they uh, also learn kata they, and kihon, they ex, ex, the, um, the pull out of the kata is kihon as basic movements and basic combinations. Uh, they get a strong foundation, strong hips, uh, better motor skills, uh, orientation in the space. So uh, I'm a strong believer in starting kata, kihon, preparing also for kumite. Um, it's a more difficult, more difficult question uh, for a mental um, consideration about this issue. Um, I find kumite very <clears throat> um, mindset building. If you have an adversary and uh, he is going at you, this is um, more mind building than uh, if you only do kata for yourself. But kata is very important. Right, so let's stick first with kata. Let's look at kata more specifically. I see practicing kata, the sequence of forms and positions, as both a mental and a physical exercise and also memory exercise too. So I know that some martial artists focus more on kata because maybe they just don't want to get involved into kumite because as you were saying, it can be really brutal, especially at high level uh, practice yes. and high level yes. competitions. So what yes. are the benefits outside of the dojo of practicing forms of kata? 
um, I always was on the realistic side of martial arts. It's hard work. Uh, as we uh, talked before, it's a physical education for most. And if you get over these obstacles, you get maybe a better, stronger person. A direct relation uh, for training kata, being a better person in real life, looks a little bit abstract for me. The whole system is very good for building up good persons, strong persons. Uh, but kata alone, maybe there is a lack of real confrontation, of real pressure to to build a diamond. A diamond. Mm. Yes. Right, but I do see kata as a training in patience, a training in precision, a training in, you know, w the willingness to practice again and again until you get the forms right. Am I, am I, and, and you also mentioned at a point orientation. I think that can be translated into real life, right? Orientation in space, orientation in society, what do you mean? Orientation in space, right? Because sometimes when you, do the, when you do the forms in kata, you need to, you do left, you do right, you are aware that there might be a form coming from the back, right? Um, in my later years, also I, I had a trainer license from university in, in Frankfurt. I am very proud of this. But in my later years, I, I also made a license for movement and posture, also prevention. Uh, um, sorry, I don't know the English word. Sturzprophylaxe, mm. also uh, prevent for falling down for older people and like this. Oh, I see. So here the kata has some benefits. I uh, see. Go left, go right, cross the feet. Mm. Where are your hips? Where is your balance? Um, here I see direct um, benefits. And then kumite or training with an adversary or sparring is maybe what most young people think of when yes. they when we say karate and we have you yes. know the uh, yes. the movies uh, Hollywood movies uh, Jean Claude Van Damme movies yes. which portray karate in a very in a very grandiose way but while in dojo or in a tournament kumite is, has limited rules right so do you think that kumite training can be transferred can be a practical self-defense training in real life uh, despite other self-proclaimed karate masters i really believe uh, on the benefits of karate and self-defense uh, karate is actually really, really good, especially against uh, dangerous attacks. If you face an uh, experienced brawler, karate is very good. If you face uh, a young, talented kicker who is angry at you, karate is very good. If you have a grappler, you have um, something in your toolbox against grappling, you have joint locks, you have throws. If you face even three attackers with weapons, karate is very good. Uh, the, the downside of karate is it is not so structured for self-defense. Uh, the kata teaches many solutions against self-defense situations, but not structured. Mm. So if you go direct in the self-defense system, especially graph marker, it's very popular now. They have, um, you start with uh, not so dangerous attacks, somebody grabs you in the closes, and going up to very dangerous. This is very structural, this is very good for learning. Uh, but in the end, you develop uh, a tough body, explosive techniques, also, in a real situation, I think karate is at the best. Normally, I said it to Sebastian, I say when somebody asks me what is better, karate, aikido, boxing, or anything like that, I always said my the whole years, the better man is better. Right. The better trade, the mentally stronger yes. person is better 
So uh, it's, it depends not on the system, but uh, karate as a system is really very good if you train it in a old-fashioned way. If you build your fists through real weapons, if you use techniques who are not allowed in other sports. Mm. Uh, no, I'm a karate master. I say self-defense karate is very, very good. Right. And I think the, the conditioning aspect in karate is also very fascinating. Uh, two years ago, before the <coughs> pandemic, I was in Okinawa. And I went to a few museums and obviously I went to the Karate Federation and checked out some of their uh, resources. And they had a museum where you could pick up the jars to walk around or to walk I in the... It's a pre prefectural museum. Yes. And outside, outside the building, you see some holes from the shots from the Second World War. Correct, correct. I, I think was in this building. we went to the same place. And trying to pick up those jars and do a few steps, you realize that it will strengthen your, your, your fingers and your wrist and your forearms. Like this. Having uh, participated at many international, uh, uh, können wir bitte noch mal irgendwie da dazwischen. 